Welcome to your first lesson in P5JS. For this video, we're just going to go over two simple things. The first thing we're going to go over is, what is this right here? This is the P5 web editor, and we're going to just talk a little bit about how to use it. And the second thing we're going to go over is how to code our first line of code, which is how to draw a line. All right, so we're going to be talking about drawing lines. And that's it. That's the whole video. So first, this is the P5 web editor. We're going to be using it to code everything we do in this course. All right. It's really great because first it's web based. So, you know, you just have to open a web browser and there it is. And then two, it saves all your work automatically for you, which is really nice. You can't like lose your files. It's all hosted in the cloud and it auto saves everything. So even if like your computer crashed, it would still be there when you went back on the internet. So that's a lot of benefits to this. Now, none of this saves though, if you're not signed in. So the first thing you should always do when you open this up is sign up or sign in. All right. So I already have an account. If you don't already, just go to sign up. And the easiest thing to do here is just go right here where it says login with Google. So just use your school email account or you know whatever Gmail account you have. And you just go log in and that's it. Now you're logged in. All right, and you'll see your name right there. So that's me, P. Siegel, Benjamin Siegel, I'm logged in. Once you're logged in, that means you could save your work and you can copy other people's work. And what I mean by copy, I mean it's like you can like make a copy of another person's code. You'll be making a lot of uh, copies of my code, so that's important to know. Okay, now let's talk about the different areas of what this is. The first part here that's most important, this box over here is called the text editor. This is where you put all of your instructions that's into your computer. This is where we do our programming. So if I wanna say like, do things, this is where it would happen. Now, you'll see that turns red. That's not how you talk to a computer, but this is where we do all our typing to uh, to give our instructions to the computer. Now, once we've given the instructions, what you do is you press this play button right here, and the play runs the code. You send it to your computer, and it's going to do everything that you told it to do. So the play button right here, boom, and you see that something popped up over here, which brings us to our next area. This is called the canvas. Everything that we're doing in this class is going to be, we're going to be drawing, we're going to be creating things, and you're going to be able to visually see what you've coded. So this right here is called your canvas, and this is where you'll see all your drawings appear. Okay. The next part over here is called your console. Now the console is usually used to say, like, when you've done something wrong. Like when the computer is angry at you, it will yell something over here at you. So for example, <coughs> let's say I do this. I just go... Um, yeah, right. This is not a command. You can even see it's red. That's not good. If I press play, you'll see that it turns red and it's giving me an error. That's bad. So what this is doing is telling me what I did wrong and it's giving me a warning like, hey, this isn't good. Now, that's it. The computer didn't blow up. Nothing went wrong. You could put whatever you want in here. Your computer will not blow up, but you will see this little red thing that kind of just tells you where it's going wrong. And a good thing to note, by the way, if you ever like, why is my code not working? It tells you where you went wrong. It says line nine. So if you look here, it says uncaught syntax error. Maybe that makes no sense to you, but it tells you it's on line nine. So if I go to line nine, hey look, that's where my error is. And that's what I need to fix. So this is actually very helpful. Great, so that is the basics of the P5 web editor. Now other things here is you could save and you can open others here. So these are just other things you can do with your P5 web editor. This is where you, if you want to create a new sketch, you press new, it'll create a new one. Um, if you want to open one, you can open old sketches here. So if you have old sketches that you've made, you do it here and so on and so forth. So that's the P5 web editor. Now, two other things I want to mention is you'll see that there's actually code here already. There's the setup and there's the draw functions. Now, just to be clear, when we are coding, we are going to be coding uh, drawings and you should know this, that the drawings are actually growing drawn 60 times per second. So every second, what you've coded actually runs 60 times. It's, that's how you make animations. Now, it might not look like it here, but this is actually getting drawn 60 times per second, all right? And we do that because if you want to create an animation, you can actually make things move, you can make things bounce around, you can make games. The only way that happens is if you're constantly refreshing the page 60 times per second. So that kind of leads me to what's going on here. So the first thing is the setup. The setup just runs once at the beginning of your code. All right, you do it one time. This is where we're gonna be spending most of our time, inside the draw function. 
everything you want to draw, everything that you want like drawn over and over again, everything that you want to show up on your canvas, that gets put in your draw function. All right, so that's where we're going to be the most of our coding. And then finally, you'll see that there's these two um, things, or sorry, these two functions here already. The first one in the setup is create canvas. Create canvas does exactly what it says. It creates a canvas to draw on. Remember, a lot of programming languages or libraries just put things in like re human readable uh, language so you understand what it does. So if the function name is create canvas, it's probably creating a canvas. So what it's done is it created a canvas and then you have these two numbers here, 400 and 400. And that is the length and the width, sorry, the width and the height of your canvas. That's it. So if you look here, this is a 400 pixel by 400 pixel a canvas. So it's 400 across and 400 down. If you wanted to make it longer, all you'd have to do is make it bigger. So we'll increase the width. And look what happens when I press play. See how it gets longer? We could do 600. It gets longer again. But we're going to stick with 400 and 400. This is um, the first step. And just to be clear, we do this in setup because we only want to make one canvas. If you're making a painting, you use one canvas, but you do like lots of drawing on top of it. So we set it up by just creating our canvas here. And that's already there. You don't have to do it yourself. And the second thing you'll see already here is the background. Now the background is just the color you see here. So you see how your canvas is actually a little gray? That's because this number 220 here is, is here. If you want to change the color, you could change it to like something like zero, which is like pitch black. Or if you want to be totally white, you could do 255. And that's white. Or you could do something in between, and that's all the grays in between black and white. But we're going to stick with 220 because that's a nice light gray. Perfect. So now you know everything that's going on with your P5 web editor, and you understand the code that's already here, the create canvas and background. Now it's time to start our coding. Now in, this, um, in our lesson today, we're just going to try to code two lines. And we're going to look at two lines that already exist and try to code them ourselves. So if you look here, we have two, uh, two lines right here. We have line A, B, and C, D. And the question is, how can I code line A, B? Well, what we learned is that we could do that by just doing this. Actually, let's move this just a little bit over so we can actually look at the lines while we code them. The way you code a line is simple. You just use this thing called the line function. This line function will draw a line for you, and all you need to do is provide, provide four numbers. Those four numbers that you're going to put inside of these parentheses are the uh, x, or your first coordinate, in this case it's a, so, and the second two numbers will be the coordinate for b. All right, so you just put four numbers, that's the first coordinate of the first endpoint and the second coordinate, um, so that's your second endpoint. That's it, so four numbers. So if I wanted to code line a, b, all I have to do is put four numbers here. So coordinate a is at 40, that's my x coordinate, and my y coordinate is 20. So I'd start by doing 40 and 20. All right, so that's two numbers. So now the computer knows where the first point is, knows where to start its drawing. Now we have to give it the second coordinate so it knows where to like finish the drawing or like which two points to connect. So the second point is b, which is at x at 140 and y at 120. So it's 140 and 120. Now if you press play, you see how this line looks exactly like this line, right? Same slope, um, like the same area, it's in the top left hand corner. Perfect. And that's it. All right, that's how you draw the line. So remember, just write the word line, and then you put the four numbers in parentheses, and this represents the first point and the second point. And I'm just going to put a little comment here. Now you don't have to code this, all right? But these two lines mean like don't, this is, I'm just going to write something in English right now. Ignore this line of code. Draw a line at, with endpoints 40, 20, and 140, 120. And that's just a little note that I like to put. These are called comments, code comments. They're not necessary, but it's just a good way so you can like understand what the code is doing. So this thing that says line 40, 20, 140, 120, that draws a line with endpoints 40, 20, and 140, 120. Perfect. So let's try the second line right here. 
So the next one is CD. So we're, once again, we're going to do line. And this one is at C over here. So we got to give it four numbers. Don't forget. So the four numbers we're going to put in, beside, in between the parentheses are at, let's see here, 80, 280. So X is 80 and 280. And then our D, sorry, C is at that those numbers. And D is at 240. That's our X and 160. So 240. 160. If press play, minimize this, you'll see that now we have that second line that looks pretty much exactly the same here. And that's it. All right. So it's the same thing. You'll see once again, same slope, same everything. We did it perfectly. And that's it. That's how you code lines. You have to put four numbers. Now, two things. First, let me just comment this out. Draw a line with endpoints 80, 280 and 240, 160. Notice how nothing happens when I put this in. Like I said, code comments do nothing. They're just like something for you to read if you don't know what's going on with the code. And that's it. Now, before I leave you, and you know, I just wanna show you two things. These are the common errors that students make. It's probably good that you know them. Maybe you're having those errors right now. First thing is this. Let's say you didn't put four numbers in. What would happen, right? Because the computer needs to know, like, what are the two endpoints? But let's say you only gave it, like, three numbers, which is, like, one endpoint and, like, not enough for the second endpoint. If you press play, you'll notice, if you look over here, you get this little thing in your console. And it says, P5 says, line was expecting at least four arguments, but received only three. Remember, this is where your computer yells at you down in the console. So it's telling you why you can't see that second line. You expect it to show up there, but it didn't. And it tells you exactly what went wrong. You're supposed to put in four arguments, but it only received three arguments. So we'll go back here. Let's change that and put it back in. And now it shows back up and we get no error. The computer stopped yelling at us. And the second, second thing to know is a lot of people don't understand that you have to put everything inside the draw function. So you see this, these curly braces are where the function starts and that's where it ends. Anything outside of that, it doesn't draw. So if you were to take this line and you were to put it outside, so let's take this out. You can actually drag and drop it. And I put it over here now. You see how it's beneath this curly brace? If it's beneath it, now it's not inside the draw function, so it doesn't get drawn. That will create an error. So if I press play, it says line is not defined. And that's because outside of the drawing function, outside of where you draw, line isn't a thing, all right? That's not like regular JavaScript. This is something that needs to be drawn. And so since it needs to be drawn, you have to put it inside of your draw function. So you see these curly braces, it's important that all of your code will go in between these curly braces unless otherwise told. So anything you draw goes in between here or else you will get an error. All right, that's it for your first video. Good luck coding. Um, I can't to see. Can't wait to see what everyone creates. Bye-bye.